The Sly Cooper movie, TV show, whatever you prefer to call it, it's no secret that adapting the Phoebus Raccoonus into other forms of media, outside of the comics anyway, has proven to be rather tricky, partially due to the Ratchet and Clank movie's failure. But after it became a TV show in 2017, there's unfortunately been no updates about the project, and everyone just assumed the show was transferred to PlayStation Productions and eventually thought it might have gotten cancelled at some point. Especially with Sucker Punch's recent statement about there being no studio whatsoever working on the series in, I would assume, any form which probably counts the TV show? I don't know. And while that's likely due to the rumors of the past year getting so out of hand with people probably bugging Sucker Punch about it so much they just had to say something. So this was ultimately done to keep people from getting disappointed, and whether or not it's because there's an upcoming announcement outside of merchandise is still debated amongst the fanbase. But that's not what I'm going to be talking about today or the new Sly Cooper easter egg in The Last of Us Part 1, and this post by the official Fantasy Star 2 online Twitter account. This is clearly Sly Cooper, and you will not convince me otherwise. So, it's really nice to see these in time for the 20th anniversary of the series, which happens to be this month, and... As some of you may know, it's officially Slytember or Sly Month. I don't really know which one is the actual name we're going with. And basically, it's a month-long celebration of the Sly Cooper series for the, well, 20th anniversary. If you're familiar with other fan type of celebration events like Spyro Community Day or Jack Month, this is basically the same thing except for Sly Cooper. You know, come to think of it, Ratchet and Clank's 20th anniversary is in November, so maybe we should do a Ratchet and Clank Month. Might be worth looking into. Anyways, I want to focus on something a bit more positive than what we usually hear in regards to the Sly Cooper series, and that's a new spark of hope, uh, no, not that one, although I am looking forward to it. But what I'm talking about is the possibility of the Sly Cooper TV show, or even the movie, could still happen someday. For anyone keeping up with PlayStation Productions, they've been announcing brand new projects left, right, and center. On top of giving us regular updates on previously known projects, like the Horizon Netflix series, where it was recently confirmed that Aloy will be the main character of the show. But there's a few reveals that were honestly unexpected, because as of the time of these announcements, some of these IPs are technically considered dormant like the Sly Cooper series. The first one is Days Gone, based on a 2019 post-apocalyptic open-world zombie game. That's the best I can describe it because I ain't played it. Developed by Ben Studio, who brought us Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PS Vita. The game received mixed reviews by critics and was considered by Sony management as a disappointment, despite selling really well. The official sales numbers are up for debate, but the game did sell more copies than all of Ben's other games combined. According to David Jaffe, known for his work on the Twisted Metal series, as soon as Sean Layden left his role as Sony Worldwide Studios CEO, months after the game released, the game was officially dead, and when Bend tried pitching a sequel to Sony, they pretty much rejected the idea altogether. That's basically the simplified version of the whole story. So needless to say, it came as quite a shock that Sony would even greenlight a film for something that they themselves considered a disappointment. Now granted, the game's developers and even members of fellow Sony Studios expressed their dislike on the casting choice. And while I will probably never touch Days Gone, 
I do feel the game's developers should have a say in such a decision, considering how much Insomniac and Naughty Dog were involved with the Ratchet and Clank and the Uncharted movies. But even though it's been three years since Days Gone released, Normally, that's not enough to consider a series as dormant, given how long game development takes nowadays. It's just Sony's shenanigans that caused this series to never go anywhere until the film was announced. And the second series that was recently announced to be getting the film treatment is Gravity Rush. Yes. I'm as surprised as you are. The series actually started out as a PS Vita exclusive in 2012. It then received some DLC and even dedicated DLC in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. The first game on the Vita managed to sell over 200,000 copies as of August 2012, and it apparently warranted a PS4 remaster to reach a wider audience. Gravity Rush Remastered was released in 2015 by none other than Blue Point Games, the people who brought us the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection and the Shadow of the Colossus remake on PS4. After that, the sequel, Gravity Rush 2, was released on PS4 in 2017, and that was the last time we seen anything relating to the series in over five years. This is partially due to the Team Gravity division of Sony's Japan Studio, who was responsible for the Gravity Rush games, was dissolved in 2020 with members of the team forming a new game studio called Boca Game Studio. And then Japan Studio was essentially absorbed into Team Asabi last year, allowing the team to focus on a single vision and build on the popularity of Astro's Playroom. Team Asabi then transitioned into its own studio later that year. But earlier this year, Gravity Rush's director said that he would like to work on a third game in the series if given the opportunity, as well as bring those games to PC. Seeing as Sony has taken a big interest in porting their own games to the platform in recent years. Now, in Gravity Rush 2's case, it did get a full-blown 20-minute prequel anime, which is the only time the series got a technical adaptation before the announcement of the movie. Gravity Rush is one of those games I've been interested in checking out, but never got around to playing. And it's an odd choice for an adaptation, considering sales were never really high for the series. Now, of course, we also got the Twisted Metal TV show, as well as the Jack and Daxter movie, both of which we've known about for a good time now, with some confusion still surrounding Jack and Daxter, mainly concerning if it was actually confirmed. I've already discussed this in a previous video, so if you want to know more about it, just click the card in the top right corner. Anyways, with Sony taking this much interest in adapting not just the older and currently active IPs, but also recent IPs that are kind of seen as dormant or outright dead, despite their reception and how well they sold, it virtually doesn't matter. This tells me that any IP under the PlayStation umbrella has a proper chance to get adapted. And with Sly Cooper, despite not knowing what's going on with the TV show, if it's still in the works or if it was cancelled, and possibly even rebooted, nobody knows. It still falls under the older but dormant category. And if we look at Sly Cooper 4, a game that was received well, depending on who you ask, didn't turn enough of a profit for Sony to greenlight the planned DLC or a sequel, despite announcing the movie the following year. Either way, if the Gravity Rush, Jack and Daxter, Days Gone, and Twisted Metal adaptations are anything to go by, then I'm taking this as a good sign that the Cooper Gang can still make a comeback, just not in the immediate future. And with the way Sony's been randomly announcing new projects and giving us updates on known projects, 
except Jack and Daxter, as nobody outside the Uncharted director is acknowledging it at the moment. But, I wouldn't be surprised if we randomly got a announcement for a revamped Sly Cooper TV show out of the bright blue sky one day, it actually happened the day the TV show was announced, way back in 2017. So, it could happen again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But please, if you do revamp the Sly Cooper TV show, get the original voice cast back. That's all I ask. And with that said, guys, that's all I've got for today. As usual, what do you think about all this? You think these recent adaptations of older and dormant IPs are a good sign for the Sly Cooper TV show? Or am I looking too deep into this? Be sure to leave everything in the comments section below alongside any questions you might have. And as always, I've been Blue Knight. Thank you all so much for watching and for the constant support. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys back here next time.